Hey guys, just finished watching DC's Love Drip Tomorrow Season 2, Episode 7, um, Invasion. This is pretty cool. It's the final part of the um, four-part, but it's actually a three-part crossover. Um, and it was pretty cool seeing all the characters together and everyone we interacting. It was kind of interesting that um, and, you know, at the beginning, it, uh, Theo wasn't in this because she did say she got back into the costume in order to fight aliens, and she didn't get to fight any aliens. I mean, she was on the ship, and she did, was there uh, to see them, to see the aliens on the ship in the, last, in the era episode, but it's kind of funny that she didn't see that, so I was kind of feeling like, you know, if we see her in the next episode of Arrow going like, dude, you benched me for when the actual fighting of the aliens went down? Come on, you know, I think she'd be disappointed about that. Um, and so would all the other guys, um, all of the Oliver's team, you know, Mr. Terrific, uh, Wild Dog, uh, you know, Ragman, and uh, all that would be kind of disappointing not being in this episode. But uh, otherwise, it was pretty cool seeing these characters in here because it was pretty cool seeing all these characters, all these legend characters and, and the Flash and all this stuff. And Supergirl, it was pretty awesome with that. It was cool seeing at the end, seeing Cisco give Supergirl, uh, you know, a, a key to kind of go come up, jump between worlds and stuff like that super easily. But the thing is, I like that idea that she can come over anytime she wants, but it doesn't make it easy. Like the whole point of making everything in this same universe, same world, same crossing over, is it's cool when when Diggle can go over to the Flash and Flash can go and you know Cisco can go over to uh, you know to Arrow and they have all these episodes like that. I mean, there was the episode back in uh, season, during season two, I think, where Cisco and um, and and uh, Iris's father there went over to Starling City to talk to. Uh, um, just talk to talk to Captain Lance and stuff and get some information about a case and all that stuff. So Joe West and that was pretty cool seeing that and it was cool when Diggle and Lila came over with Argus to talk about to deal with uh, King Shark and you know Felicity goes over all the time and is back and forth. And even even uh, even Ray Palmer went over when he first created the, the Adam suit. He went over to the Flash to, to to work with Cisco on it and stuff. So things like that is what really makes this really fun of a, of a thing and it's hard for shows like legends to do that because they're, they're time traveling they're doing all their cool things on their own that i understand but supergirl them being staying in one time in one spot it just would be so cool if this was just another city on on the same earth as flash and arrow so that uh, so that wind can just go over to take go over and check things out uh someone from the deo could from the deo could just go over and check it out alex and, and alex could go over looking for a case dealing with stuff and interacting with the metahumans on uh, you know help barry out or help oliver out for an episode um you know martian manhunter could go here or there or or you know guardian james's guardian could go over here or there or just james or something could do something those are what really makes it so cool uh, and that's why I wish that we kind of get this Crisis on Infinite Earth storyline. I don't know how they can do this big Crisis on Infinite Earth. It would be such a big thing to do and all that stuff. But if they could find a way to make Supergirl's National City and all those characters, also not just Supergirl, maybe even Superman, have the characters get dropped on. Maybe just destroy their Earth. Have it be something like Superman can't not just defeat it. Or somehow it would be cool to get all those characters on um, onto uh, the Earth of, um, you know, Flash and Arrow Earth and stuff and Legend of Tomorrow Earth. That would be cool seeing them all in there because I don't want to just have Supergirl crossover whenever they cross over. And so she only crosses over during the big crossover. She can't do the little crossovers throughout the things. that We want her to be part of that little cross. Not just have to be Supergirl, but also the supporting cast. It's cool when those those guys cross over. But getting back to this episode of uh, Legends, Legends was pretty cool. It was cool seeing everyone get in. We finally got that one reference between Super... Uh, between on Ray's like, oh, she looks like my cousin. Where it was funny, it was surprising that that Ray said it and not and not Supergirl. Um, but I guess because you know, I guess uh, because uh, I think Brandon Ralph and um, the guy they got to play Superman there don't don't look alike. But I think and if he had, she had said, you know, he looks like jor his father or something like that, Superman's father, that would have been cool. Um, but I would like that was a really cool one liner. Glad they got that one liner. I would like to a little bit more of a bigger one liner than that, but it was glad. I was kind of glad that they had it, um, and it was just cool seeing the Hall of Justice again throughout this and everyone interacting and fighting. And it was cool seeing Barry do the the, the kind of slow mo Quicksilver thing from Days of Future Past and stuff, where he's kind of moving the bullets. Although we only got it for like one bullet and two things he did throughout that. Um, and I understand what those things is. You know, I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, when they do it for Quicksilver, he spends so much time on set more. Like, by far, almost twice as much time as everyone else did in Days of Future Past, just to do those slow mo scenes. So they are very difficult to do. Um, having him 
move things super fast in slow motion those scenes take um you know like four times the length of the entire movie so doing that on a tv show was probably difficult but it was cool seeing barry do it and uh, you know i guess you can't wait waste too much of a waste uh, you know five minutes of a 45 minute show or 40 minute show and uh, have him you know all that takes this that five minutes is only taking time and it's only taking only lasting one second throughout the whole timeline of the show you know type thing so uh they can't do that too much but it was cool seeing barry in that slow motion stuff doing things it was cool seeing all of her get saved by uh supergirl um although that save was kind of like it was kind of it was cool seeing that doing for for their to make the point and stuff that oliver can trust her and stuff but uh, there's no way he felt he was looked like he was in danger and like that. I mean, he's fallen from that before, and you know, used a arrow thing to swing around, to swing around and stuff like that. So definitely, it was cool seeing things, seeing the things that hope went on, went on with this, and definitely can't wait to see what happens in next year's crossover. Hopefully, next year can probably be the some sort of um, crisis on infinite earth type thing. Uh, maybe a smaller version of that or something like that some sort of the, whatever they can do for Christ and if there is to get the Supergirl Supergirl cast all of them in sent in the same earth as this so they can cross over without having to jump through portals and stuff like that because you know you, you want we want all those character interactions and not just you know once and the big things it's the little ones if throughout the seasons that really make this so much fun to be watching and it makes it so that oh when this character goes over and he explains what's going on on there it really makes it all part of one and it makes it so much worth more worthwhile to watch all of the shows at once you know, right now you could be watching Flash, Arrow, and Legends, and you know Supergirl popped up, and you just nah, if you're not watching Supergirl, there's no reason to go to watch the to uh, if you're not watching if you're watching all those three other shows, no reason to watch Supergirl. There's no pieces that are missing or anything like that. But if you're watching um, same thing with Supergirl, if you're watching just Supergirl, there's no reason to watch uh, you know Flash, Arrow, and all that stuff. And you even saw um, beyond the trailers, they they she reviewed it and. Um, She's like, yeah, I don't feel like I need to watch the crossover, so she's not going to watch the crossover. So that's the one thing that I would kind of uh, would like to change with it for the next crossover is making it more of a full-on crossover. When you say part four, make part one actually be part of it and not just a teaser for the crossover, not just a build-up to the crossover. And I'd like to see, like I said, uh, you know, little crossovers with one character's going over here and there. Um moving around possible with Supergirl because right now you know Wynn and all those other all the other and Alex and Martian Manhunter and Superman and Cyborg Superman all these characters can't really go over and cross over um because only Supergirl has the keys so I don't want it to only be during the big crossover event when we see that we want to be able to see the little ones that happen throughout the whole time so let me know what you think guys about this episode in the comments below um what do you think about the whole crossover and did you like it I really liked the crossover uh, I just could, definitely can't wait for them to do the kind of uh, Chrysler Infinite Earth style for storyline to get everyone in the same world um and see that possibility so let me know what you think guys in the comments below and i'll see you guys in the next video peace